Hawk, what, what's your opinion when we when we see all of these like news and castings? Morning, it seems that like the parents they're like barely grieving. They seem more relieved in some ways. If I'm being honest, like they're just like, oh, this burden is gone. I think is I think we're starting to see that out of all parents. I mean, I'm, I see that out of white parents too. Yeah, I'd be okay. shocked at the lack of emotion from these from parents because I think I think it may have something to do with the fact that like maybe they're numb, they're in a state of psychosis or shock. Um, you know what I'm saying? Because it is very early. Like if your kid gets killed and you're like talking on the news that the that night or the next day, that's fucking early. Like, um, you haven't gone to the grief stage yet, man. Um, I, I'm sure that that guy is like, he's dying inside. The, the last father of the kid who was hanging out with the 24 year old. But I think that like, he just might just be in that stage where he's like, just like, yo, just, you have kids? Mm, no. Oh, okay. So yeah, man, it's just wicked as kids. I know wicked as kids. It's just like yo, like those people. If they're human beings, they're like dead inside, man. When you know, finding out their kid got shot to death, man. Oh. I, I feel like these these places though, like they've become such war zones that it's almost like the parents, like. uh kind of interpret these types of killings, these types of deaths, almost as if it was like inevitable, like old age. Now, I will say that knowing that what he said at the end about his son being, you know, in trouble with the law for the last two years, I can understand I can, that may have something to do with it. Like, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, shit. you know, but uh, yeah, I'm sure that has something to do with it. And it was Wednesday morning when I woke up this morning, one of the first things that I got a chance to see happened to be a new report that really just left me in awe. That happens to be that report by none other than the National Institute for Children, or shall I say criminal justice reform, with regard to music videos now spurring violence in the city? Unusual. Well, how about we talk to an artist that knows all about making music videos and happens to be a colleague of mine, the afternoon host at WPGC Radio, an artist extraordinaire, none other than DJ Flex. Flex, thanks so much for coming on the show. Welcome to the Live Zone. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the new show. You deserve it, soldier. You put in a lot of work, man. I'm, I'm real pleased to see you doing, doing your thing for the city. I appreciate you. Speaking of doing things for the city, you have been doing that <laughs> for years. I don't want to date us here, but you've been doing it for quite some time. You heard me make mention of what this study found, and that is music videos now contribute or really a catalyst for gang members to really, let's say, communicate with one another. With now, this guy, Flex, he's a... He, he's a DJ been on the radio. He knew he he had a hit song in DC. Um Southeast, South, Southeast. Um I wonder what he's gonna say. If he's gonna try to like keep his street cred, or is he gonna tell the truth? Because he kind of like he kind of like a dude where he's like, you know, he he can't go too hard on the brothers because he's he's down and shit. I wanna see if he's gonna tell, you know, just tell what it is, because DC is a fucking Warsaw. Rivals, and then that spurs violence. What do you say to that? Well, it's been going on for a while, and it sucks, man, because what's happening is, is that something goes on in one neighborhood, they put a video up, and it's about, and they actually go into this neighborhood and, and, and be on a block. It's, it's a mess, man. This ain't the only city that is happening in also, but it's real live here in D.C. where they doing this, and it's, what it comes down to is about respect and status and it's it's and people are dying man yeah. it's like it's, and it's, it's i get frustrated because some of the um the young people involved they're treating this like it's a video game or something you know what i mean like you get to start over once you get killed and then once you kill people don't know how to deal with their emotions and so it turns to anger and then all they want to do is revenge and the cycle goes over and over and the, the stuff they're doing this is these are some of these videos are well produced uh, I mean, well produced, and then they just going on talking about the other neighborhood, talking about 
what they're going to do and what they're doing. It's just bad, bro. Yeah, I, bad. Well, uh, well, I wanted to bring you on because, you know, it's no secret. We all know you, obviously, from the radio, but we also know you from the Water Dance, uh, the song that you created in the video that went along with it. And so when I heard the word video, I said, you know what? We got to have Flex on because you actually created a music video. It was a different time back then. It's a different time now. Talk about the difference between what you did with regard to art and what these, well, let's say, gang members are doing now. Well, it, the difference is right now is technology, to be honest with you. Um, it's, it's even a platform because when we had to do it, we had to work hard because we had this. That's how we was going to sell these records, and we had to get out there. People needed to see it. And when you had a, a something that was making noise and buzz, you had to share it with the world, and that's the way we could do it quickly with a video of it. But now you can, with, with social media and everything else, man, you can put the same type of videos we was doing back in the day together in 15 minutes, you know, and it costs <laughs> next to nothing, and the quality is amazing. So that is the big difference is technology has changed the game for the whole, for everybody. And that's what also messes the uh, industry up because now anybody and everybody thinks they can do it. Yeah, one of the things that I will applaud you on is that you have always been a man of the people and you've always had your ear to the streets, uh, including, uh, I would say, communicating with gang members. You had a series <laughs> recently where, where you sat down and you, and you spoke with a number of teens that actually thought it was okay to conduct carjackings. Talk about that. All right. The show is called The Jacker. Um, if you ever want to uh, pull it up, go to WPGC.com slash The Jacker. And it's a, I sat down with a, a real carjacker. Now, we did it on a Zoom call, so because I didn't know. I, I'm not going to tell my release by source, but somebody hooked me up with this guy who was living that life in them streets, jacking. And then he sat back and talked about why he does it. And the main part was buzz because of lack of opportunities and <laughs> things that was going. He really wasn't. He bullshit man it ain't nothing but opportunities in dc that's bullshit this dc full of opportunities man um if you it, listen it, it's just it's just another way of blaming everybody else but himself it's like oh it's not my fault i'm doing it it's everybody else's fault yo the town i live in in pennsylvania them white kids don't have no programs None. And before all these people from New York and Philly started coming up there, there was no ground. None. Yeah, um, he's, he's just playing the victim. Like, you know, I'm carjacking because I'm a victim. It's, it's unbelievable. DC the got victim no programs. No yo, DC, if, yo, it's nothing but. Now, listen, here's the thing. If you done killed some motherfuckers or you done shot up some motherfuckers block, yeah, it might be too late to turn to go to the program now because niggas looking for you and shit. Or you got beef, you know what I'm saying? But you know, or you too deep into the streets, you know what I'm saying? You can't the boys, you know what I'm saying, you can't even not hang with your boys because your boys ain't gonna let you not hang with them. Cause you know what I'm saying, you shit. You shooting motherfuckers, motherfuckers coming back shooting up the block, and you over at the fucking program, <laughs> fucking <laughs> playing on computers and shit. You done fucking got out block hot shit. You better come over here and, and, and run from some of these bullets, woofers, man. Um, so I get, I get that, man. But at the the genesis, before they get into all that trouble, there's plenty of programs for them, and even when they come home from prison, man. Um, yeah, so but like, what, what opportunities are you talking about? Like, you, you can't go get a job at Home Depot or Lowe's or McDonald's. If or you go to the Home Depot in DC, if you go to the Home Depot in DC, you won't think you're in Africa. You won't think you're in the home. If you go to the Lowe's in DC, if you go to anywhere in DC, any store, Walmart, you're going to think you're in a Walmart in Africa. Everybody who's an employee in there is black. Oh, so if you pointed this guy, if you pointed this guy to a target, say, "Hey, look, man, they're uh, hiring over here. There's an opportunity for you right there." He's not going to take that opportunity. Probably not. He was cold, but his heart wasn't like frozen. Like he wouldn't jack old people. 
Uh, he wouldn't jack old people. That was his biggest thing, and he wouldn't like go like pregnant women, anything like that. Man, anybody else was was game, especially cats that drove them Hellcats and all of that. They was targets, and he would explain how he would do it. You would think that the number one place to get jacked at would be at a gas station. He said, no, it's too many cameras. The number one place that he likes to get them at is he cases their house out and catch them when they get ready to go to work. Wow. And then he tell them, told me how they, how they fix the pods so that they can um, so they can uh, open the doors to the cars and, and they don't even need the, the keys. It was like, it's amazing. They're so smart, man. I'm like, wow, if you could focus this energy or just have an opportunity yeah. to use it, they are really geniuses. And so with that, <laughs> wow, wow, there, there's no hope, man. There's no hope. Well, you have to understand, though, this is like entirely performative. It's kind of like part of the dance. Like it, it's just he knows he's bullshitting and lying, but it's just part of the dance. Yeah, because he's he's like he like in that world, you know what I'm saying? So it's like. He ain't, he ain't, he can't get up here and be like Candace Owens and shit because he got a no, no. You know <laughs> but like, um, like he, so, he can't just go up here and be like, look, like we just can't really figure shit out the same way gliders can. So instead, he has to like disguise it in this manner. You know, or he can't say we need to start arresting these motherfuckers. You notice he hasn't <laughs> even approached that. He hasn't yeah. even. Like that, that has it. And, and it, I wonder when, if this guy's gonna bring it up. I'd like to know what he's gonna say. I pretty much know he's gonna say, like, man, we need programs and shit like that. But, um, so let me read some of these super chats. Salute to Tracy Jones. Please tell me you see what's going on at the board. Of course, I do. Of course, I do. That's Allen says, five dollar challenge for my brother. Ah, it won't break you. BABs love the show. Been here on and off for a year, three years. Yeah, salute to you. S. Allen. Salute to you, man. Appreciate you, man. Um, MS S66. Miss S66. Coming through once again. Salute to you, baby. Um, hit the like button. You heard her. Salute the product of Cook County. Says, yo, I'm just chiming in. Seen the replay of the stream last night, and that shit was canon. I love Lock Nation. Salute to you, man. Salute to the product of Cook County in the building. Um, With that, what, what was the ultimate result? I mean, obviously, he sat down. I mean, it was a Zoom meeting between both or a conference, if you will, between both you and him. Uh, I'm pretty I, I know you, Flex, and I know you, you dropped knowledge on him. I'm curious. Did he walk away with a different outlook? Here's what I did. I left him with some uh, I left him with some choices and I left him with some leads and I left him with some opportunities and I left him with some incredible gentlemen to surround him. And then I just said, y'all take him. And if he wants to go this route and go the right route, we'll make sure he's straight. I'm not, I, I'm not going to say what happened to him, but he's, he's, uh, how about this? He's not jacking right now. Wow. And that's cool. Mm, he dead on jail. Kudos going out to you, sir. We appreciate you. I know you're getting ready for your radio show. Of course, uh, two to six, you can listen to Flex on WPGC 95.5. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule, Flex, to stop Can I by. say one more thing? But bro? of course you can. Is it okay? Okay. I would love that anybody watching this show that wants to help pour into some um, some young men, that preferably middle school men, that we can get a coalition of young men together and we can just continuously go into these schools. Well, I'm not talking about assembly and we show up one time. I'm talking about really do some quality mentorship. They got that, Flex. They got, they got a thousand of them things in D.C., man. It's a thousand of them groups, man. Um, yeah, wherever, wherever, like the the money pours in for quote unquote programs, like Baltimore, for example, it's like one of the most funded places in the country. Those schools, but it doesn't seem to 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 matter. Uh, it's, it's DC is DC is um it's a it's, it's a strange place, man. They they got plenty. 
Plenty, plenty of on um, progress, man. Um, let's see. Uh, uh oh. We're getting our first look at the moments leading up to an officer shooting and killing a man in D.C. So this all started as a call for a man having a mental health crisis. Fox 5's Not a Senior Bones, who live outside MPD headquarters with more on that video that was released. Nana. And guys, Assistant Chief Jeffrey Carroll, he walks us through a three-minute video that shows us the moment a D.C. police officer shot and killed a 41-year-old man. We want to warn you that the footage you're about to see 